This upcoming Monday, we mark 22 years since the September 11th terrorist attacks, a day that forever changed this city and so many lives. And among those impacted are the people who became sick after working or living near Ground Zero. Joining me now is Courtney Clark, who survived cancer four times. And Courtney, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story with us. I appreciate you having me, Cindy. Now, where were you on 9-11 and, and the days after? I had just graduated from NYU back in May and started my first job. I was working in Soho, and I remember standing on the street with my new colleagues. We were looking up at the smoke pouring out from the skyline, and somebody said, this just doesn't even feel real. If it feels like Bruce Willis should be coming in to save the day, like it's a Hollywood movie. Mm. Um, and in the days after, we came back to the office. Mm -hmm. Everybody thought it's fine, we're, we're okay, we're safe now. Um, so we went back to the office and in those afternoons, uh, in that first week or two, I stood in line with hundreds of people to donate blood. Mm. Yet we all wanted to do something right, right. to help. And in, in my research since, I've learned that it's really common for people to want to take some kind of concrete action mm -hmm. uh, when you feel powerless. So now when I work with groups on how to build their resilience, that's what we focus on. It's like, what are those concrete actions that you can take to feel less powerless, to feel more in control? Now, as we mentioned, you had cancer four times. Tell us more about the illnesses. So I was diagnosed the first time with cancer at age 26, just four years later. I had no idea, of course, that mm -hmm. it had anything to do with my exposure to September 11th. Um, and then two years later, I was diagnosed with cancer again. But in the process, my oncologists looking for cancer, they found a brain aneurysm oh my that was about to hemorrhage. They never would have found the brain aneurysm if it hadn't been for the cancer. Um, so I would never be so trite as to say, oh, you know, everything mm -hmm. happens for a reason, right. um, and certainly never about something uh, with as much trauma around it as September 11th. But I do believe that when things happen to us in life, we can make meaning out of them and use that to inform our path forward. And that's what I've been trying to do. No, definitely. I mean, so often we hear when somebody finds something, uh, you know, horrible happening in their body, it is because they were there for something else. So how are you doing now? I'm great. I am cancer free uh, for the fourth time. Wow. Yes, uh, my most recent struggle with cancer was in January of 21, which was really the height of COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. uh, so scary. I had to go through it all alone in the hospital, um, but I am healthy again and we just keep trying to stay on top of it. It will likely keep coming back. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really lucky because I've now gotten to build a life around not just building awareness uh, regarding cancer, but also helping people be more resilient. I speak and help teams adapt to change mm -hmm. and learn how to reach their goals even when they have to change their plans. Yeah, So definitely. I feel very lucky. And you know, speaking of changing your plans, because of your cancer, you couldn't um, have children, but I hear you adopted. That's true. It wasn't a good idea for me to get pregnant um, with my kind of cancer. It could come roaring back. Mm -hmm. And so my husband and I, five months after we got married, we were working a volunteer day. Um, I had been volunteering with kids who were aging out mm -hmm. of the foster care mm -hmm. system, and I knew the need was there, um, but we had just gotten married. I, that wasn't in the plans. Maybe someday we'll worry about, you know, how we might start a family because I can't have a baby. And then we met this 17 year old young man and he is just the brightest soul. And we started mentoring him and then he asked us to adopt him. Wow. Yeah, and that's, isn't that the way it goes yes. in life that you, know, you think, okay, this is how it's gonna be. This is my, pla my path, my plan. And then it doesn't turn out and you go, oh, why me? But sometimes it turns out just as good, yes, even yes. if it's totally different. And so, so often it is the older children who really need the, you know, to be adopted because, as you said, so often they just age out of the services that they get as younger, younger people. That's All true. right, so you're here, you're sharing your story right now. How else are you raising awareness about 9/11 related illnesses? Well, I'm very lucky. I, my job is really meaningful, so I get to travel the world and speak to organizations about what it's like to change your plans and still reach your goals, how to be more adaptable so that when things fall apart, mm -hmm. you don't fall apart. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. Um, and so I'm here talking about 
what we can do to, to be more aware, to bring awareness to the fact that there are probably a lot of people like me. For years, I thought, there's something wrong with me. Why did this happen to me? And that's a really rough place to be. We gotta flip out of that mindset. Um, and we don't always learn right. why something happened to us, um, but we still have to move forward anyway. So for me to learn, I'm not broken. Mm -hmm. This is why this happened to me. Now I want other people to know. 30,000 people have been diagnosed with World Trade Center related cancers, but they think there's a lot more that they don't even know about. Wow, thank you so much for sharing your story and continuing to, you know, like you said, something horrible happened and, and you're making sure that, I don't know, warning other people. So It's really important. Thank right. you, Cindy. Thank